hear us, buddy? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Hey. Hey. Beautiful. Yes, you... we can hear you. How's it going? Okay. Good, mate. How are you? Very, very good. Thanks. How's uh, Perth treating you this uh, wonderful uh, yeah. Day? Nice sunny day. Uh, had a dip in the pool earlier this morning. So, wow. yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and, yeah, just love it, man. I mean, you have literally the best sunsets every single day <laughs> <I've been> in Perth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. That's, yeah, good to know. It gets yeah. boring at the sunsets eventually. I mean, that could... <laughs> <laughs> How long have you left for? But I've been away 20 years now, actually. So, oh, 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I okay. came, came to London as a little 18-year-old and was only going to be here for one year. And it's uh, now... 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Gabe, just to give you a little bit of context, um, obviously Anna put us in contact, which is, which is great. Anna Swart, yep. um, protein power. What a, what a lovely lady. So she, you know, obviously got us in contact. So we're very grateful to her, but uh, well, I was checking a whole lot of your cartoons yesterday and you flipping at me <laughs> stitches on some of them. I was loving that. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. You had a great, great sense of humor, but like, yeah. I love the way. Yeah. I've done, I've done a Mandela one. He's oh, have you? Yeah. I'm a yeah. Yeah. one. Sure, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that one, but I must check it out. But, great, uh, yeah. I, re- I really had a good giggle last night at some of them. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Really. Thank you. Uh, no. Okay, and I'm okay. going to just put my phone on. We had a recently had a little... <laughs> yeah. <recording>. yeah. <laughs> my audio didn't record on the last one. I was devastated. It's oh, right. <laughs> after like 70 episodes, it's just like, can you believe it? You think you get it right, but it kind of. But does, doesn't the, this Zoom program. No, the Zoom, does, record... yeah, the Zoom was oh, the okay. but it's not, the oh, Zoom is not <clears throat> like amazing, you know, like compared, oh, the quality. To, the, compared to the yeah. software we use. So, okay. Uh, yeah, but, but we're all good now. <laughs> and then also, coincidentally, like the next day or, or just that week, I, we did another podcast. We were on someone else's podcast. Yeah. Right. And my audio literally for the first time ever i sent it through they were like what's wrong with the audio it's like stop start stop start the whole time and i'm like okay so you can use this thing literally almost three or four times a week and record yeah. and and literally it's still something can go wrong so now we're like okay back to backing up with our phone right. <laughs> <laughs> so funny man anyway We're here with Gavin Ong Tan, uh, all the way in Perth. Thank you so much for joining us on the Ridiculously Human podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, excited to be here. Looking forward to a chat. Cool, awesome. man. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, we're really um, excited. We had a very special lady to thank for this introduction, and that her name is Anna Swart from, Pro- Pro- from Protein Power. And yeah. believe it or not, she was actually our very, very first guest. So we're super stoked uh, about that one, actually. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's cool. Yeah, she just is uh, met through Instagram, I think. Um, you know, she sent me some nice, kind messages about my work, and she's a big fan. And I, you know, I like what she's doing as well. A bit of a entrepreneur. So, yeah, happy to be put in touch with you guys. Yeah, I was I was thinking last night. I was like, oh, how come Anna? And then I was like, oh, of course, Anna does all her little drawings and doodles yeah, and, and stuff, too, which yeah. is amazing. I love that part of her, <laughs> her work. So that's obviously the connection, I guess, as well. She found yeah. your stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and they're actually really, really cute, aren't they? I really like her innovations, and she's a really, really wonderful person. So yeah, we're really grateful to her for that one. So. But, thanks, uh, Anna. Yeah, thanks, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gavin, coming back to you, um, you were just the little kid at the back of the class, doodling away. Uh, and uh, take us back to those times as a kid where those seeds of your creativity were being sowed. Uh, yeah, so that's right. I was kind of um, that kid in class who always was doodling instead of uh, listening to the teacher. And, um, yeah, my files and books would just be littered with with doodles and eventually, you know, other, other students would ask me to, to draw in their files and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I just, I've always had that, that passion for drawing, I guess. And, you know, kind of crossed over with my passion for, you know, cartoons when I was a kid, for comic books. And yeah, I've just always loved to doodle. And it's just kind of thankfully been able to slowly but surely, you know, keep going throughout my life where I'm able to, to do it for a living now. I just wonder, were you like, 
we like a natural sort of out the blocks, you know, and just really good at drawing or is it something that you learned? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. You know, can you really learn to, to draw? But, you, you know, as, long, as far as back as I can remember, I've always just yeah, been doodling or drawing, you know. So I'm sure that I, I sucked when I was a kid or I'm, I'm very sure that I sucked when I was a kid. And just, you know, it's just like anything, you know, you know, the more you do it, the more repetition you know, slowly you get better and better. And, you know, yeah, I can see, I've seen some of my old drawings when I was a kid and, you know, I thought they were cool when I did them, but when you look at them now, they're just like, <laughs> like horrible. So yeah, there's been, you know, definitely a gradual learning curve. Um, there might be some innate talent, but it's definitely only part of the, um, the mix. I think it's definitely mostly practice. Yeah. Of course. It's like, it's like with anything, isn't it? You just, yeah, it's just, you know, I just always, I always, lent towards drawing more than sports or writing or music. Um, I've got a musical family and I never, you know, picked up the guitar or anything. It's always just been drawing. So <laughs> that's cool. I don't know where, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> and, and talking about family your your dad was a printer. So I assume you had lots of like paper at home to practice on. <laughs> oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, he had his own little print shop um, here in Perth and yeah, I was surrounded by mountains and mountains of uh, paper. <laughs> so I could, you know, you know, I'm not proud of wasting so much paper, but you know, yeah, I had heaps lying around and I didn't have to use the back, which I hated to do. So I could always grab a, <laughs> a fresh sheet of paper. Um, so yeah, he kind of was, uh, you know, self-employed. So I guess maybe that's where I learned or was inspired to kind of, you know, do my own thing and be my own boss. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. It's always interesting, isn't it? Like, how different would your life be now if he didn't have all that paper there? I mean, you you just don't know one of those yeah, those true. little things, eh? Yeah, it's just yeah, it was always um, within arm's reach, um, and yeah, it's just it was just a nice little um, uh, you know helping hand along the way. For sure, and and obviously you know you're super into your own cartoons and what have you, but obviously we all want to know. Like, what were you watching and reading? What kind of cartoons were you into um, right. as a yeah. youngster and maybe even later on? Um, well, yes, yeah, so I kind of grew up in the, the late 80s, early 90s. So it was all about, like, the Ninja Turtles and Transformers <laughs> and, <laughs> nice. um, you know, Ren and Stimpy. And, you know, The Simpsons was, you know, blowing up around that time when I was, you know, eight or nine. So that was a big, big deal. And, yeah, you know, I kind of... Um, my uncle, he kind of collected um, these old English comics, like, uh, you know, I mean, it's called Beano, and um, mm, Beano. he also collected me a Mad Magazine, so mm. they were always lying around his house, <laughs> so they were a big inspiration too, and yeah, Mad Magazine especially was a big one where I would kind of just see the amazing artists in that and try to copy their drawings. Um, so yeah, it's just always been something I've drawn to, I've been drawn to the kind of comics, animation, um, nerd world. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember uh, in the Mad Magazine where you could fold that page and... Oh yeah, he's still, he's still doing them. Um, I was, yeah. Yeah, Al Jaffe, he's still the artist. He's like 90 something years old and... Uh, no ways. Yeah, he's a legend. That's that's. I was literally about to say that, Craig. I was like, "Flip!" Really? It just came as soon as Gavin said, "Like Mad Magazine." I remember Me that too, like back right? page. Like you, could, I was like, "No ways!" Yeah, the Mad Folium. I used to love those. But but my uncle was really particular about uh, the magazines. He wouldn't let me fold them because he didn't oh. like the crease in the. <laughs> oh no ways! How did you get around that? So, you know, just had to kind of gently try to massage it into place, and then you know, <laughs> just not crease it. Uh, oh, classic sorry. and and t <laughs> talking ninja turtles like they were massive as well like for for yeah, us definitely you... when they first came on the scene it was like yeah. i was here in heaven in heaven <laughs> tell me about it yeah, did, did you did you like like the turtles more or any of the other characters more no it was always yeah, one of the four turtles <laughs> <I was. laughs> were you who, who did you sort of associate yourself with uh you know probably michelangelo the this you know the fun loving idiot okay. <laughs> nice. I, I remember always liking donatello because i think he was oh, purple yeah. for some reason so. yeah. <laughs> the smart guy he's a smart one uh, that's classic <laughs> oh classic man um actually it's funny because um my dad 
he used to call my stepbrother and I Bebop and Rocksteady. Who oh, right. Like, yeah. Who are the two like rhino oaks or the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you think about how crazy that the actual brain or what is it, crayon? What was it? Yeah, crank. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like, how crazy is that if you think about it? Like, it's yeah, the imagination of this little brain in the thing. A brain inside a, a robot body. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, Pretty cool when you're thinking. like nine years old. Tell yeah, me exactly. about it. Yeah, yeah. And and talk about like, you know, being a youngster and into cartoons. Were you ever like teased or bullied or anything like that because of it? Uh, you know, not really. I mean, they weren't, you know, definitely as, as big as they were now, you know, the whole superhero movie industry. Um, definitely more of a niche <laughs> um, <laughs> hobby back then. But no, I wasn't really teased or ridiculed or anything like that. I was just, you know, I had my, me and my brother used to collect the comics and, you know, it was just a good way to, you know, become a good reader and, Mm. And so, you know, really, you know, I would just copy all my favorite artists and characters. So, yeah. it's a, yeah, a good, good learning experience, I guess. Yeah. That's so cool. Is there something Gareth and I have been talking about lately? I think after we'd spoken to one of our guests is like, um, there's so much to cartoons, you know, like just so many facets to them and you like just reading for a youngster i think a lot of parents are like why are you reading cartoons but yeah you know you're still reading you know yeah, what I mean? exactly and yeah i don't know why it would be uh you know discouraged in the house you know it's just and it's all it's so visual um it really kind of you know sparks your imagination just the, the drawings the colors i mean i just i think they're great <laughs> yeah, yeah i could agree but um, talking about, you know, when you, you know, reading cartoons as a youngster, you obviously for a long time actually wanted to be a cartoonist. And uh, how did your parents sort of take to that? Uh, not great. <laughs> um, so, you know, I haven't, you know, uh, Asian parents and they kind of steer kids towards the more, um, you know, reputable careers like a doctor or a lawyer or you know, something along, along those lines. And, um, you know, like any Asian uh, parents, they want you to be a doctor. That's the dream. That's number one. <laughs> um, number two is probably a lawyer. Um, and but since I showed some kind of artistic talent, uh, they kind of wanted me to be an architect. Because, you know, they figure, you know, you know, you're drawing, you know, why don't you like being an architect? <laughs> Isn't that just drawing? And, I, you know, I was not interested in that because I don't really like maths. So, um, you know, they weren't that encouraging about it, uh, mm. to be honest. And, you know, they were never really believed that it could be a, a career. I never really believed it could be a viable career, to be honest. Especially, you know, living in Perth, Australia, you know, there's not really much of a, a cartooning industry here. <laughs> you know, all the, all the, my heroes were either from America or the UK. Um, so yeah, it was definitely unrealistic uh, growing up. Um, but you know, after high school, I kind of, I knew that, you know, I wanted to do something maybe creative. So I kind of went, I studied graphic design um, at uni. And uh, that was, you know, it was okay. I, I didn't love it, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, kind of, so yeah, my parents, you know, they were just, they wanted me just to be, get a job, basically a good mm. job and not have to worry about me, which is fine. I understand that now being a, a dad myself. So, <laughs> um, you know, it, it was normal. It's fine that they, you know, they didn't encourage me, but they just wanted the best for my future. Yeah. Um, so I kind of listened. I was a kind of a good son. I did what I was told. I went to university. I got a decent job and, uh, we, you know, we can talk about that later on if you want. What happened after that? <laughs> so, so talking about university, you basically kept your hobby, I guess, at the time going on the side and you were still drawing a lot and sending, yeah. you know, some of your article, or sorry, I'm sorry, some of your cartoons to big American mm -hmm. syndicates, um, but they, yeah. none of them actually got sort of accepted and, you know. No, had, yeah, so around that, when I was in uni, um, probably when I was, 18 or 19, I, I decided that I wanted to be like a big uh, syndicated comic strip artist, you know, along the lines of uh, Garfield or Calvin and Hobbes or Peanuts, something like that. So, you know, there was this book that you tells you how to do that, you know, how to submit to all the various syndicates. So I got that book and I was, I read it very, um, 
you know, closely and I followed the instructions, you know, I put together some samples, sent them off to all these American um, syndicates, they're called. Um, who they, they kind of buy your strip and they sell it for the newspapers around the world. And so that was kind of what I was doing in my spare time um, in between my uni assignments and whatever. Um, but yeah, I did that for maybe a couple of years and, you know, didn't really get any positive responses from that. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was always practicing. It was always on the back of my, my mind that it was still, you know, a, a dream, like to keep chasing this dream of being a professional cartoonist, even though I was studying design. Um, that was kind of, you know, the plan B to get a job as a graphic designer, um, which eventually became plan A because that's what happened <laughs> when, I, when none of these syndicates um, yeah, accepted my samples. And, you know, they're looking back on them now, they, went, they were pretty bad, so I don't, <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> and how did you handle that at the time? Was it, like, tough for you? From a um, you know, yeah, you know the, the rejection hurts, um, but, you know, I was pretty happy just to get a response, basically, even though it was a, like a, a templated, you know, letter that I'm sure they sent to everyone. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I knew that, you know, maybe that wasn't the way to go, the, the comic strip thing, especially, you know, newspapers, definitely was like an American thing that was more of American industry and it was kind of a dying industry as well because you know they kind of accept it's such a the odds are so stacked against you that that maybe they accept one new comic a year out of all the thousands that they get mm. submitted and you know, it's so hard to kind of make your strip stand out if it does get accepted because you know people just want the old stuff the old classics yeah they're not really willing to try to try new ones so it was yeah it was kind of just um you know flash in the pan the dream and um eventually i did graduate um the design course and i did manage to get um a, a job here in perth as a designer at a at the local newspaper here so that was kind of my first real job <laughs> and you know i still i still kind of practice you know cartooning in my spare time and you know working in the newspaper uh they have comic strips obviously so um they had a comic section there and you know i kind of managed to kind of tweet talk uh the editor to kind of <laughs> allowing me to have a strip in the newspaper so nice that was my first, you know, stepping stone, I guess. And that strip was kind of like this goofy superhero um, humor strip that was uh, published every week for, yeah, over five years. So that was kind of, that was kind of my first um, apprenticeship, I would say, in, in cartooning. Sure. Um, so that was, you know, I wasn't really getting paid. I got like paid 50 bucks per strip. Um, that was every week. And, you know, you couldn't miss a deadline. Newspaper never is not printed on the Sunday, so it has to be sent in every Sunday. Um, so yeah, it was really a good experience looking back on it now. Mm. Yeah, that's really cool, man. That's really cool that you sort of got your your foot in the door there. Yeah, it was kind of, yeah looking back on it, it was a bit of a you know serendipitous thing that I that my first job was at a newspaper that publishes comic strips, you know, that kind yeah. of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of, the way it works. Exactly. It was almost like, you know, it was meant to be, that's for sure. So, <laughs> yeah. so you spent, you spent eight years, um, working, you know, working as a graphic designer and also in the yeah. c corporate world. And then yeah. eventually time came that you wanted to change <laughs> things and you wanted to go, go by yourself. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit about, you know, that transition from going from working in the corporate world to working for yourself, which yeah. you know, can sometimes be viewed on, from the outside as like, you know, like a risky thing to do, but uh, it's actually a <laughs> yeah, really definitely. brave thing to do. That's for sure. Uh, thanks. Um, so yeah, definitely. It, I kind of was working um, in Perth and I kind of moved um, to Melbourne, which is uh, one of the major cities here in Australia. Um, it's on the other side of the country, so I moved to Melbourne um, and I kind of managed to get um, a job in the, you know, like the sister publication in Melbourne. It's kind of all owned by the same, you know, corporate entity. Um, so I managed to get a job in that newspaper in Melbourne and I managed to get another comic strip published in that newspaper. Um, so I was doing two weekly strips um, in my spare time on top of, you know, working a full-time job. Um, and yeah, after doing that for, you know, like you said, eight years, um, I was just kind of, I was fried, I was worn out. 
Um, and also, yeah, in, the, in, the, in that time, um, web comics had become quite big. And I was kind of keeping an eye on what was happening in that area. So I learned, you know, how to design a website, how to design using CSS and coding and stuff like that. And I put those strips that I was putting in the newspapers, I put them online too mm. as a web comic. So that kind of um, was my first experience with web comics. And I thought, you know, maybe this might work, maybe. Because <laughs> no one's really paying attention to the strips in the newspapers. I wasn't getting any feedback or, you know, I wasn't getting, um, you know, good money or anything like that. So I thought maybe the, you know, online is the way to go because this is the future, obviously. So I started doing that. I started posting those every week. Um, I started to build a little bit of a following um, with those strips. But again, nothing, nothing, you know, great. Nothing that I could live off. There was no real money coming in. Um, and yeah, after eight years, I was, the job, the, the newspaper job was kind of, um, you know, the, the whole newspaper industry was collapsing in Australia. A lot of people were losing their jobs. And, you know, the, the, just the, the office was a miserable place to be, um, <laughs> put it lightly. <laughs> um, and you know the work wasn't ideal I was, had to do you know shift work and stuff like that on the weekends um, and yeah I was just over it I was over the whole um, putting my comics online doing those two strips I knew that you know nothing was going to happen with those so yeah I just kind of took a step back and to kind of it was time to reevaluate what I was doing because you know you know that old Einstein quote I don't know if it was actually Einstein but you know insanity is you know doing the same thing again and again expecting yeah. different results yeah <laughs> and I was doing the same thing again and again every week every week um so yeah that's when uh what was i doing yeah then i kind of started to get into the whole like self-help uh movement online like i was started to i read like the four hour work week by tim ferris and i was a fan of um chris gillibo who had a blog called um the art of Nonconformity. He's got a pretty popular podcast now. I think the Side Hustle School. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was just kind of getting into that whole world as well. Um, you know how to how to achieve your dream life, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it just kind of all kind of came together where I just like enough is enough. I'm gonna just try to do this uh, cartooning thing. Um, gonna try, you know, 100%. Um, just this one time. And if that this doesn't work, then maybe I'll just you know give up on this. Uh, mm -hmm crazy dream I had mm. so that's when uh, eventually I, I kind of came up with the idea for Zen Pencils and um, you know I can talk you through that if you want to know about that yeah yeah well, I mean so I mean goodness it's, it's a massive it's a, it's a long story I know. no 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 so it's a massive transition to have to make you know like from you know you've been through a lot you've been putting all your these hundreds of posts up to your website yeah yeah but yeah. obviously that all led you to this one point, but what, it, what, what was the thing that you guys decided to do with you and your wife? You're like, we're going to give this hundred percent go. And it, you know, you're like, we're going to have to, something has to change. And what yeah. was that? What was the thing that you sort of did that was like, this is it. Um, well, quitting my job was the main, the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of, um, giving up those two strips was a big thing for me because, um, if I kind of quit those strips, I knew that was, um, I knew that the next step would have to work. Basically, I just kind of knew that I had gone attached to the characters I was creating and the strips I was writing, writing every week. Um, so yeah, it was kind of, I kind of, uh, you know, put in my notice for my job and I kind of cancelled those two strips all around the same time. Mm. And you and your wife had, had sold your house at some stage as well? Uh, and... not, not, at that, not at that point. Not um, that point. That only came later. <laughs> uh, yeah, looking back on it, it was pretty uh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, my, we were just kind of stuck in a rut, basically. Um, um, she was kind of unhappy in her job. I was unhappy in my job. And we kind of like, we were just, you know, saying, you know, what, is, what do we actually want to do? You know, we didn't have any kids or anything, so we didn't have any dependents. And um, I kind of came up with the idea first to to start this new website called Zen Pencils. And she was like, you know, okay, that's great. How are we gonna pay the bills, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I've kind of just said, you know, look, if we sell our house, we could maybe make a bit of money. That could, you know, be a bit of a safety net. 
uh, financially. And I kind of just said, look, give me six months to, to see if I could get some traction going with Zen Pencils. And if it doesn't um, show any promise, then, you know, I'll, I'll go back to looking for work and uh, become, um, you know, go crawling back to my boss and say, <laughs> can I have my job back, please, please. <laughs> So yeah, I kind of gave myself a timeline, like six months. Let's see how it goes. I can work on it full time for six months. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, maybe I'm just not good enough and it's time to move on. But uh, thankfully um, it did, it did work. Well, that, yeah. well that man, that's super yeah. inspiring. Seriously. <laughs> like, you know, just almost putting, I guess, everything on the line there because you, you wanted to do something that you really believed in that made you happy. Yeah. And you're just passionate about it. It's like, I just love that. I love hearing that, that sort of story. Thanks. And, but, you know, again, saying that, you know, we didn't have any children, so that would have been a big, bit different. I get a lot of people kind of writing to me saying, you know, I'm going to quit my job and, you know, I'm going to do my own thing. Um, but it kind of depends on your circumstances, I guess, you know. Um, if you're young and, I mean, you know, age doesn't matter. I shouldn't say that. But, you know, if you don't have any children or you don't have any too many financial responsibilities then you know obviously makes it a lot easier yeah yeah of course of course of course i mean i know exactly what you mean yeah definitely but there it's still that mindset like you know people are, when you're in that comfortable zone and whatever yeah exactly yeah you know just breaking from that is yeah i was huge. i was kind of very comfortable um yeah. you know yeah. i could have just stayed at that job the, the pay was pretty good to be honest i would have you know you know, they would have keep, kept on giving, you know, incremental pay increases mm. to kind of keep you there, you know, stay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. That's the yeah, trap. Yeah, exactly. So I was comfortable <laughs> and I was just, you know, why am I playing it so safe? I was, you know, I hadn't hit 30 yet. So, yeah, yeah you know, why not? Yeah, exactly. But you, you, you'd also spoken, like you'd mentioned, you'd actually posted like over 350 of your comments, comics to the website and, yeah. and you hadn't really reached that traction that you'd yeah. liked or really hoped for, which is, must've been quite tough. And that, that's a lot of effort and a lot of time, yeah, exactly. um, but you took it as a, as a real like lesson in honing your skills, if I'm understanding correctly. So well, not, like not, not at the time I did. And looking back on it, oh. I, I did. Uh, not at the time I was just kind of in that routine of every week I had to get those done. I thought, you know, one day someone, some uh, cartooning a uh, higher power would see me and say, you know, <laughs> give that guy all the money he can he, he can draw comics for me and but, you know it never would have never happened so yeah it's just kind of knowing when it was to when it was a good time to quit is also you know something you have to be good at too for sure and and you mentioned um chris uh, gillibar and and his i don't know it was a blog but i thought he also wrote a book called the arts of uh, non-conformity so yeah, what so i think it started as a blog and, and okay cool oh, yeah. what, what was it in that that sort of sparked yeah you know, um you yeah though he kind of i can't i mean it was a long time ago that i read it but i remember there's one part where he kind of poses the the question where you know what is it that the one thing that you would love to do you know for free if you if you could or they would, you know, you'd be love, you would be willing to do for free without, you know, getting paid for it. And, you know, how could you use that thing to help other people, which is something that I'd never um, thought of before. You know, it's always kind of been, how do I become successful, not how do I help other people? So mm. that was a, a really good um, kind of pivot. And that's when I kind of started to think, you know, how can I use cartoons to help other people i know that sounds crazy <laughs> they're just cartoons but um that's when i started to think um you know i was kind of in the whole that like i said that whole life hack self-help world so i saw a lot of inspirational quotes being tossed around left and right <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know i had a few of my own favorite quotes that i had saved because i was going through that period myself about you know finding the life you want mm. And I thought, you know, people like these quotes. I like these quotes. They're kind of being shared online a lot. Um, and that was kind of around when Twitter, Twitter and Facebook were only, you know, pretty just a few years old around then. And people were sharing them as kind of JPEGs with, um, you know, just a, a real crappy sunset or a crappy <laughs> candle. And, you know, a quote, a quote slapped on top of that in some horrible font. <laughs> Maybe Comic Sans, hopefully not. <laughs> um, um, 
and then I kind of thought, you know, why don't I use my, because I don't, you know, I've had a background in design, background in illustration, cartooning, why don't I design these quotes as kind of posters? It's kind of posters that you'd actually want to hang up in your house. And then kind of that, I took that a step further and why don't I actually create comics out of these quotes? Why don't I actually turn them into stories? And that's what kind of when, you know, that, that light bulb moment hit, I mm. thought that's a pretty good idea. So I kind of pursued that. Cool, man. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and talking about like the transition and, and working from home and all these kinds of things, how do you sort of find a balance between running the business that is sort of Zen pencils and still being able to be creative and do art? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. It's a hard one. Um, definitely working from home um, has its ups and downs. Um, you know, just like we were meant to do this last week, but I had, a, I had to look after my daughter because uh, my babysitter um, had something else to do. So, you know. <laughs> what you know i had to look after my daughter Such that obviously life. yeah i can't i can't do anything else so yeah it has its um yeah ups and downs its challenges um you know the main thing is that you try i try to keep you know a consistent routine you know try to kind of keep that that line in the sand you know these are my work hours these are my family time hours so yes yeah, so there's a constant constant balance i'm kind of i guess i'm lucky i guess that those eight years in the the nine to five world helped just to kind of get me into, a, you know, you wake up, you do work until, mm. you know, the evening and then you kind of spend time with the family, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And, and what, like, how do you find like being at home by yourself? Um, you know, is that something that you, you, you know, do you miss interacting with people in the office and uh, you know, what's uh, also, what what is it like having, you know, your, your daughter at home? Like, do you, do you find, you find it like difficult to go, Oh, I want to spend time with you. or I need to work. Right. Yeah. Well, this is my like first adult conversation in a few weeks. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. I kind of, I do miss the office kind of, you know, camaraderie, I guess, you know, hanging out with friends and, you know, um, just having, you know, playing jokes on each other or just having, you know, grabbing a coffee, going for a walk, getting some lunch with some, some friends. Um, I do miss that, I guess, but, you know, I don't miss commuting to work. I don't miss the traffic. I don't miss having a stupid boss to answer to. So, you know, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta put things, these things in uh, perspective, but um, thankfully, you know, we've got my daughter, she's at, you know, daycare four days a week. Um, so yeah, Friday mornings, I spend with her every Friday while my wife's at work. Um, so yeah, it's good to have that flexibility, I guess. Mm. Um, but yeah, again, having said that, the root, my routine is kind of, like sacred to me, you know, it's important, you know, sometimes people think like my parents think, Oh, you're not working. You know, just, you know, can you go do this for me? You're free on Wednesday, aren't you? Can you just grab, you know, go pick me up or something like that? I'm like, you know, no, I've got to work. And I'm like, you don't have to work. Yeah, you're working at home. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a, yeah, it's a balancing act. For sure. I think that's a, that's a common theme with people that are working from home more and more. It's going to have to be like, a mantra or a sign on the door kind of thing of like, if, if I'm at home and I have a, and I work from home, that doesn't mean I'm just at home watching TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they think you're free and like, yeah. So, and you know, I have, cause my, my wife's from Singapore. So we have, you know, her family coming to visit and, and they, they see that I'm home though, you know, let's go out or let's do oh. something. And, but you know, yeah. So. I'm, you know, I shouldn't complain. It's really, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it is, it is a balancing act. Guess there's always going to be challenges, whether it's a nasty boss or yeah, exactly. laws, you know, they, <laughs> one way or another, you're going to have to work around stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, you spoke about uh, Zen pencils briefly a moment ago that you, you know, you're putting in really good quotes from, from inspiring people. Um, together maybe you could just expand expand on that i know you also do other stuff you which involves a lot of storytelling um what is the storytelling process and and can you sort of grow that and improve on that over time and and have you found that you've been getting better at it yeah i'm um, cool that's a good one um yeah so i've kind of found that yeah over the over the years since i started the website um a lot of the early posts were just kind of posters like one single image uh, one nice looking image and over the years, I've kind of found that I prefer telling stories. 
through the comics. Um, so I think it's something I've gotten better at, definitely. Um, so yeah, once I kind of find a quote that I'm going to work on, I just kind of um, just kind of have it sitting on my desk. Um, I just kind of keep reading it, and you know, I'm kind of working on it, you know the previous comic while I've got that on the desk, the, the one I'm going to work on next, so just to have it um, in my head. And you know, sometimes I know what the idea is straight away. Sometimes I don't. If I don't, then you know, I find going for a walk. I have I've got two dogs, so I take them for walks every day. I find that's a great time to to get um, the imagination um, running. Um, and yeah, just kind of sometimes it's just as boring as just sitting with a a notepad and <laughs> looking at it, um, hoping that an idea will come. Um, but um, again, I find the more that you do that process, the more easier it becomes. Like the idea will come. You don't have to get too um, anxious that there's no idea that eventually an idea will come. And that's when I just start to flesh it out. I just start to do a lot of sketches. Um, I might just focus on one scene first and get that done. And then I build in the rest of the story to fit that scene. Sometimes I come up with an ending first and work backwards. Um, so yeah, there's all these little tricks, I guess, that you can use. And yeah, I think it's definitely something that you can um, get better at. Mm. And yeah, that's kind of the hard part, just writing the story, thinking of that idea. And once that story is done, the actual making of the comic isn't like super hard. It's just kind of more of a craft. It's just building, you know, drawing and inking and coloring. That's just kind of more of an, um, like an automatic, I guess it's the, the initial writing and idea stage, which is definitely the hardest. Hmm. Com- I, I see like comics as a, I guess, a form of art and, and a great way to express yourself. They're definitely not just for kids, that's for sure. Um, right. Can you maybe tell us why you think they're a great medium for, you know, trying to get a message across or yeah. provoking some sort of thoughts? Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, that they are a great medium, one that's maybe not, um, you know, utilized as much as it could be. But, you know, obviously, you know, they say a picture tells a thousand words. So it's a visual um, media. Um, so the visual, I think, is more important than the, the words. I get well, I mean, I shouldn't say that. They both are equally important. And, you know, you know if you just have a prose novel, it's one thing. If you just have, you know, pictures, it's another thing. But it's just a weird kind of alchemy of putting those two together. You have pictures and words working, um, you know, together to tell a story. I think it's just um, really powerful. And also, it's good because, you know, instead of like saying if you had to, if you're a filmmaker, where you would need, you know, a whole team of people to be working on this film, um, a whole army of visual effects people, or whatever. Um, with a comic, you can just have one person and he can kind of get across that same message as a film, although it's kind of you know, a different medium. But, you know, I could just be one person and, and put together this elaborate sci-fi fantasy or, you know, drama or comedy. And I can kind of tell that visually and with the, the writing. Um, so, yeah, I think that helps. And another thing is that if you can't even... A lot of uh, people use Zen pencils to learn another language, like uh, non-English speakers use it to learn English because, you know, you can kind of tell what's happening with just the pictures. You don't really, and you can kind of put the words, you know, you can kind of guess what the words are going to be if you kind of have a half understanding of English. So, yeah, it's just a, a visual language that is powerful, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, sorry, go ahead. No, go on, man. I, I, I guess, you know, there, there's so many nuances to when you have, you know, to, to get the essence of what the prose or the, the piece of language is um, to, you know, an eye, a lifted eyebrow or a, right, you know, yeah. must be, you know, in a movie you can like have hundreds of takes or whatever it is. Yeah. You have to like compress that into yeah. fewer things. And I think that's must be part of why that art is so powerful because it's, it's like a whole story. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely, yeah, the, the editing is really important, you know, choosing what image to use, what's going to be the most powerful way to tell this particular story. And, and because I have to draw it, I don't want to draw, <laughs> draw these massive 
a 100 page comic because it would take me like a year so i want to get it i want to get it across as you know um efficiently as possible because it will save me time <laughs> having to draw yeah. it yeah, sure. we, 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 also, we had a lady on our podcast uh, last year sometime who's really big into like Comic Con and um, oh, know, right, loves, yeah. loves comics and stuff. And she was, she mentioned something which like really made me think. She's like, in cartoons, you can say stuff that's almost, say, politically incorrect. Um, right. But, you know, you actually can get a message across through comics because people almost, don't take it seriously in a way right um, yeah. which is which really got me thinking yeah actually you can actually learn a lot and they probably start setting a lot of trends and changing people's thoughts yeah. in comics and i mean stuff. yeah i mean the whole yeah political cartoons you know they use they tell you know have biting satire but they use humor to kind mm. of to kind of um soften the blow i guess yeah um although there a couple of australian cartoons have recently got into some hot water for their cartoons but uh, um, yeah, it's just a great way, especially if you're using humor to, to put a to put a point across. It helps a lot too. Yeah, what, sure. one of one of my favorite cartoonists, um, Gary Larson. Oh yeah, uh, I he, mean yeah, the Far Side. The far Side. Is, yes. <laughs> is one of the funniest comics I know, ever. And, and it, he has so many like animal rights things in there, but you you still laugh at it. But then afterwards, you're left thinking like, <laughs> hang on. Like it's actually so true. Like, what are we doing yeah. to animals? You know, it's, right? Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a master, Gary Larson. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. great. But Craig, sorry. Craig, sorry to interrupt you. They, they, I don't know if you ever um, uh, read it in South Africa, Madam and Eve. That was like no, I've, never, I've never heard of that one. Didn't you? Yeah, but <laughs> Craig, did you ever see it in South yeah, Africa? But yeah, but like that, that's really like I mean, you know, there was in South Africa, of course. You know, we have like a deep history of racism and things like that and and this yeah. really crossed those lines but like in a very funny way with like a a lady who you know he, she was the lady of the household and then she had this maid eve and um who was right. but it was just like it was really good wasn't it great like really got very smart yeah, yeah. Very smart. <laughs> and also like you say like such biting um topics yeah um, but everyone can have a laugh at uh, and, and see the hue or the lighter side of it uh, is is yeah i mean who knows how powerful that is like who knows what effect that has on people you know yeah profound, i reckon <laughs> um but you know you gareth you were mentioning pamela gay um and i know um you know there's you, you've got a bit of a history with scientists and stuff and we'll talk about that in a sec Evan. um and she she obviously was the one that was at comic-con and uh, oh, right, yeah. actually you know she put you guys in contact actually because she's just so into that and <laughs> oh, cool. but um <laughs> Full plate actually um, another scientist mentioned you um, in one of his uh, articles, and then obviously a whole bunch of other people started mentioning your work and you started to get this groundswell and uh, yeah what is it like to see your work sort of gaining this popularity um, well yeah, it was great because um, it's what I've, I've always kind of been working towards to so yeah to finally actually get people to to see it and to respond positively to it was um, awesome so yeah Phil plate um he's kind of one of a pretty popular science uh, popularizer i guess um he was yeah one of the first to kind of get the ball, ro ball rolling because um i did a a carl sagan uh, quote one of my early ones he's one of my favorite scientists he's kind of a the first you know before Neil deGrasse tyson before um what's his name brian cox you know there was carl sagan he was in the 80s i guess um so yeah, I did one of his quotes and I did the comic. Um, I think it was maybe the the 10th or 11th or 4th uh, comic I did for Zen Pencils. And yeah, I kind of, you know, I was using Twitter a lot um, to kind of ping all these, you know, famous scientists if they might want to check it out. Um, you know, most of the time I, would, I wouldn't get a response. So um, Phil was one of the first to actually respond and he said it was great. He shared it with his followers. And, you know, he had like a, maybe a few hundred thousand followers at that time. And he had his own uh, science blog. So he posted it on that blog, which has a lot of readers. So that's kind of got the ball rolling, I guess. Um, and I got a lot of people signing up to my email list after that. And yeah, just kind of kept building and building. Um, I guess the next big one was, um, I think I did Neil Gaiman, a Neil Gaiman quote. He's one of my favorite writers. He's like a comic sci-fi author. And I did one of his quotes and 
he did like a commencement speech um, about making art and I turned part of that into a comic, which is one of my most popular ones still. Mm. And yeah, I kind of sent it to him and he, he enjoyed it. And again, he shared it with his followers. I think he had over a million followers at that time. Mm. So, you know, stuff like that kind of was happening more and more often. And, you know, I wasn't targeting like just famous people. I mean, I was doing quotes that I liked and um, writers that I liked. I wasn't just kind of chasing, chasing the, yeah. the influences. But yeah, they all kind of were in my, my likes and um, my wheelhouse, I guess. So yeah, it's kind of just kept building up to that, building and building. Um, and yeah, probably the, the biggest one was uh, this quote I did from Bill Watterson, who was a cartoonist. And he did uh, the Calvin and Hobbes strips which is my favorite comic strip. And he's one of my favorite artists. And I took one of his uh, commencement speeches. I took out um, um, a few quotes from there. I turned that into a comic and that kind of got really, that kind of, I guess that was my, one of my first comics that went really viral, I would say. It kind of appeared all over the internet, all over these blog sites. And um, yeah, it just kind of, that was kind of the real start, I guess. Oh. Wow. That's, that's so cool, man. And, and is that, did you like, is it, was that the real turning point when you started earning cash and you went to okay. Um, well, yeah. So, um, before I know I, I, before that I had, I think I had got a book deal as well before that I should say. Um, but yeah, I kind of set up my own uh, poster store online where, you know, you could buy poster versions of the comics and that was, um, that went well initially. And, um, yeah, I kind of was selling t-shirts as well. That did well for a while. And um, yeah, eventually, yeah, I managed to get this uh, book deal to collect uh, the best um, strips from the website. So that was, that was kind of a big deal moment for me because it's the same publisher who publishes the Calvin and Hobbes collection. <laughs> so it was all kind of, all kind of came full circle, I guess. And um, thankfully it, I've been managing, um, I've been able to kind of sustain myself financially just from, from books and posters um, and I kind of use Patreon as well lately the last couple of years. So yeah, I've been able to stay above water um, and survive, I guess, for over for seven years now. Crazy. <laughs> Amazing. Cheapest. Yeah. Congratulations, man. That's really, yeah. thank you. That's really awesome. Well then very Thanks inspiring. So, so you're, a, you know, I guess a bit of a self-confessed like introverts, um, but these yeah. days you, <laughs> You know, you, you meet your fans face to face, uh, you give talks in front of large crowds. How does yep. that kind of make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was definitely um, a challenge, uh, especially the, the public speaking ones. So, um, you know, part of uh, some of the quotes I've done um, is about kind of, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and pushing yourself to try new things. So I can't, I can't really make comics about that and then not try to practice what I preach. So I try to, you know, do things that are scary to me, which is definitely um, doing talks, um, you know, getting um, to meet my fans. It's always nerve wracking. Um, but, you know, I kind of, I had a book tour with my second collection. So I kind of got to do a lot of talking um, on that tour. Um, yeah, it's just, again, it's just initially it's, it's super scary, but, you know, the more you do it, the less scary it becomes. And, I'm uh, still not great at it, but it's, it's still not my ideal um, <laughs> um, way to spend my time is talking in front of large groups of people. <laughs> but, you know, if, if I'm asked to do it, I know that, you know, it's something I can do now. Um, I think, have you heard of Toastmasters? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah so I think if, when I, before my first big talk, I did start going to a few Toastmasters classes. Um, I did that for a few months, so that helped as well. So again, it's just practice and and just trying to get good at something, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend it. I think Toastmasters is great. Like, you know, yeah, it's free. It's, uh, you know, I'm yeah. sure there's one around wherever you're living right yeah. now. And yeah, I recommend it if you're definitely scared of public speaking. Yeah. And I think, you know, well done again, you know, it's, it's things that are often worth it are not necessarily easy, but you, right. you're like, I'm going to do this because I care enough. And I guess, you know, that's what it's about, isn't it? Um, yeah. And you definitely care about your, your readers and your fans because on your website, you have a reader of the month uh, right. section. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, you kind of share some of the stories um, about the people that are reading your, your work and how maybe, 
that work has helped them in their lives or, or yeah. prompted a change in their life. So what is the sort of inspiration behind doing that, featuring your readers, but also maybe you could share an interesting story or a, a cool story with us yeah. from that, from there. Um, yeah. I mean, it's been amazing. It's just, I was just getting so much incredible feedback. Um, so like, like I said, well, I didn't say, but when I started Gen Pence, it was like, you know, I never really thought, I mean, I did think about the Chris Gilbo's questions, how can I help other people? But I never thought it would actually, you know, make people take action or do anything, you know, maybe they just might see the comic and smile or, you know, share it with a friend and say, oh, this is nice, isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. I never thought that it would actually inspire people to take action. So I was just getting all this amazing feedback um, where readers were kind of saying how much they related to the comics or how much they related to my story. And it kind of was inspiring them to, I mean, leave their jobs or to follow their passions. Um, so I was just getting all this amazing feedback. I thought I couldn't, I had to share it with all my other readers because it's just so amazing. <laughs> so, um, let me think of a story. I mean, to be honest, I haven't done one of those read of the month in a while, but um, I still get all this amazing feedback and I try to respond um, to their messages and stuff like that. But yeah, one story um, that comes to mind is um, this reader, I did this comic about uh, adapted this poem called um, Ithaca, which is like a this poem all about seeing the world and, and exploring the world and travel and that, you know, the journey is the destination, you know, stuff like that. And I was really proud of that comic. Um, and so I got a month later, I got this email saying, oh, you know, I really love that Ithaca ad adaptation. Um, I loved it so much that, you know, it inspired me to actually quit my job. He was like an engineer, uh, in engineer in India. And uh, he quit his job and he went just backpacking around Asia for a few months. Huh. And then um, when he got back to India, he decided he didn't want to be an engineer anymore. Um, he was kind of in the same situation I was when I was working, you know, pretty miserable. And he, instead he started his own travel company, um, mm. like a travel agency. And um, he called it Ithaca, his company. So that was kind of, yeah. Wow. Uh, so it was kind of like full circle again. And just, um, yeah, I get stuff like that all the time. It's, people have had, um, you know, tattoos of some of my characters <laughs> on their bodies. People have, um, there's this one popular comic I've done about um, love, about this, this couple in love. And people have turned that into like a, a play. People have turned that into a short film. Oh. Um, people have used it to propose to their, their girlfriend or boyfriend. Wow. Uh, people have had wedding shoots based on that comic. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just really mind blowing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, wow, <man. laughs> so yeah, it's just been, um, yeah, it's been, it's been beyond my wildest dreams, I guess, all wow. these amazing um, connections I've made all around the world. Jeez. Amazing, man. That's so cool, man. That's so cool. <laughs> I, I saw something on your Instagram. Someone had a, like a tattoo yeah a poem. yeah so that, that was a yeah. yeah someone got a um this poem that i actually wrote and it wasn't um it wasn't someone else's words i actually wrote this poem because um you know the more after a few years i kind of didn't want to depend so much on other people's words and actually try and write words myself um i'd always been scared to do that and one of my first original pieces was this poem i i did um it's called my spirit is a roaring sea and um yeah it's, it's that's kind of got a lot of great feedback too and this this girl kind of uh this uh the girl's mum bought the poster version for her and had it um, hanging on her wall for her whole sorry for the last few years of her her school days um and yeah after she graduated school she she um, had always wanted to get that passage tattooed on her body and mm. yeah she just recently graduated and and she got that done Wow. And yeah, it's just been yeah, amazing. Amazing, man. That's real connection, man. She's <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I was. Where do you? I mean, I know it's like a real stupid question, but like you know, the stuff that you do is also very funny. Like, have you always <laughs> found that you've been humorous and had a good sense of humor? Oh, well, I mean, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to say that you've, you've got a good sense of humor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I always try to you know not take the word too seriously, always trying to kind of inject some humor into it. So yeah, some are more, you know, funnier than others, I guess some are more serious than others, but yeah, I always try to have that underlying 
sense of fun or or humor in the, in the comics. Um, yeah, so I'm working on a new series now um, for kids, and it's basically it's nothing like Zen Pencil. It's kind of a humor um, superhero story. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do at the moment. No, that's that's awesome, man. So you have a you you have a very interactive audience. You're also very interactive with them, um, with your readers, uh, and you sometimes get like submissions for ideas. Uh, how yeah, how important is collaboration for you to kind of keep being creative? Um, yeah. So early on, I knew I had like a maybe a backlog of maybe ten to fifteen quotes that I that I would turn into comics. Um, but I knew after that that I was going to run out of <laughs> quotes. So I kind of yeah, t- um, put it upon the readers to send me um, their favourite quotes, um, their favourite book passages or poems or whatever. And yeah, that's kind of makes up a large part of what I turn into um, Dan Pantry's comics. So, you know, they kind of suggest the, the quote or the, the poem. Um, but that's, I don't really collaborate with them, I would say. I just kind of, they just kind of send me the initial um, passage that I can go on and turn into a story. That's cool, cool man. Yeah, it's, it's super special that anyway, it's, it's, you know, someone out there finds that very meaningful and, you know, and you've, you've yeah. adapted it. And I think that's, yeah. that's really cool. So that, that's one way when inspiration is lacking. What are, what are the other things you do to kind of jolt yourself into getting some inspiration? Or is there, is there a technique? Uh. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, funny you should mention that because I have this new book that I've got. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's all about. Game. It's all about. It's all about how to be more creative. Um, so this is uh, this came out uh, early last year. Um, it's called. I think it's reversed on this on the camera, but it's called Creative um, Struggle. And so um, it's just taken my best quotes about creativity and um, how famous people have kind of um, unlock their creativity, I guess. And um, at the end of the, the book, I've kind of written my own um, eight tips on how to be more creative. Um, so I can just give you a brief rundown of that if you like. Yeah. Um, so there's a few little tips that I kind of find helps me. Um, so yeah, number one is that uh, routine is sexy. <laughs> so, um, I think, I mean, there's a whole comic inside the book, but I'll give you the brief um, notes is that you know i think having that routine is key um it's not you know people think that if you're an artist you live this crazy spontaneous life where you're just kind of having ideas whenever they that you know they come and you just kind of um you know float through life and you just think of ideas and it's (laughs) kind of it's not too hard but yeah i find that you have to just sit down um have this dedicated time try to think of ideas try to write try to draw and that's when the kind of the, the inspiration comes. Uh, mm. So that's uh, number one. I, I won't take too long. Um, but uh, number two is that distractions are the devil. Mm-hmm. So you want to avoid, obviously you want to, especially working from home, it's hard. You want to avoid the internet. You want to avoid social media. <laughs> that's, this is all nice. easier said than done. I, I might add. But, <laughs> um, so you try to limit those distractions. Uh, there are apps uh, programs that you can use. I use a pro an app called Forest, which um, basically you can't touch your phone as long as this app is running. Cool. Um, and I've also set like timers on my social media apps. Um, again, it's easier said than done. Some days are better than others, but I find you try to limit those. Uh, number three is uh, avoid comparison. Mm. Uh, this is a hard one. Um, so especially stuff like social media where you're following your favorite artists or your favorite writers, um, your entrepreneurs or whatever, and you, you're kind of compa- oh, constantly comparing yourself to what they've done and what they've achieved. And it kind of, it kind of makes you feel like shit, basically. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, it's always good to have role models and inspiration, but don't just constantly compare yourself to more successful people because that is a no-win situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, number four is kind of let your mind wander. So, um, like, um, I kind of have famous people, how they come up with ideas in this book. So, like, Nikola Tesla would, he would just think of his ideas purely in his head. He wouldn't write anything down, which is crazy. Like, he's a super genius. <laughs> but like, uh, Mary Shelley, she kind of wrote, she came up with the idea of Frankenstein when she was kind of half asleep, like in that semi 
wow. that kind of in between state that you have in between sleep and wow. um, being awake. Yeah. Um, so you know it's okay to kind of just daydream. Or I find meditation is also pretty good for this, where it just kind of you know let your mind kind of go in different directions. Yeah. Uh, that kind of can help. Um, I just a few more. I won't go through all of them. Um, another one is a set yourself deadlines. I find. Yeah. So even if you don't have an actual deadline, I find that if you set yourself a deadline, have a little project, give yourself um, mini projects that you can achieve. Don't give you like a lot of people, um, aspiring cartoonists, they email me and they say, oh yeah, I've got this idea for a graphic novel. Uh, it's 200 pages. I'm going to get it done, you know, but any, they've never written a graphic novel or done a graphic novel in their life. And they're starting with a 200 page. <laughs> graphic novel, you know? right, so, you know, start small, you know, start if you're a writer, write a few short stories first. If you're a cartoonist, do a few mini comics. Um, just, you know, get, get these and finish them. You know, that's the key is to finish yeah. them. Mm -hmm. um, so I find setting yourself little deadlines, having little projects helps. Um, another one is to fortify your skin. So if you are putting your work out there on the internet, uh, not everyone's going to like it. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be prepared for that. Um, be prepared for the negative uh, comments or whatever the trolls because um, they're part of it yeah um, and just don't let them kind of uh, dictate where you go next and don't let them change your art basically I mean unless it's obviously if it's crazy offensive then maybe yes but <laughs> don't let them you know don't kind of constantly self-correct according to their feedback you know stay mm. on your path um, sorry, I don't know if it's taking long. But the <laughs> no, last no, one, no, please carry on. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the last one um, is increase those reps, basically. So just practice makes perfect. I know it's not exciting, but um, it's, no, it's no use finishing one short story. You've got to keep doing it. You've got to finish 10, mm. 15, 20. Then you can write your novel. Then, you know, so just uh, build those reps, you know. That's the key. Yeah, I love those. Those are really great, really great advice. <laughs> It's yeah, the they're, reality. They're, they're kind of explained in that like very uh, humorous and uh, cool, man. <laughs> no, brilliant. We'll definitely yeah. check that out. Thank you. We'll, we'll post that obviously in our, our show notes and stuff as well. We'll, we'll uh, talk about that, yeah. yeah, for sure. No, I mean, geez, I look forward to, to reading it. That's, one, that's for sure. So I'd love to find out a little bit about the sort of practical and technical process of putting together a cartoon because on your website you have a an awesome sort of introductory about you video and it shows you you know you you've got your little sort of uh, sketch pad where you you're sketching yeah. the cartoons and then you convert it somehow electronically and then you yeah. have another like thing that looks like an ipad but i don't think it's an <laughs> ipad <laughs> and you're coloring everything in um can uh, you yes uh, ah. yeah sure of course <laughs> um yeah, so I use kind of a mix of traditional and digital um, techniques. So a lot of cartoonists these days, they just do it all on that, that tablet that you saw. It's called a Wacom um, tablet. They're kind of the, the industry standard where you can kind of, it's basically a drawing tablet where you could use like a stylus just like you would a pen on paper. Um, so a lot of cartoonists just use that um, purely. But I kind of, um, a bit old school, I do like the traditional um, pen on paper. So I kind of do half traditional where I do the, the pencils and the inking, which is like the black, the line work all by hand. Um, and then I scan those inks into the computer. That's when I put it onto that tablet and I kind of use Adobe um, Photoshop to add color to the, mm. to the black line work. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, so it's just a bit of a traditional media and a bit of um, Photoshop. Um, so so, yeah. Sorry. So, so, how, so, like, when you scan it, yeah. like, how does it, how does Photoshop like pick up the the lines from the scan? Is it, was there some some other software, or is Adobe smart uh, enough to do that? That's just the no, that's just the basic scanner. Um, there, there's a certain there are various um, settings that you use to kind of get the optimal um, look. Uh, but yeah, it's just a scanner that Photoshop will scan that as a a, peer, a Photoshop document. Nice. We've got all the black and line, black and white line work that I've drawn, and I can use Photoshop now to go in and color in all those little things. Basically, like an advanced coloring in book, basically. <laughs> That's so cool, man! And and you, you, can, you can check out um, my website. I, I kind of walk, I go through it in depth. 
Oh, but great. You, the, reason, the reason you use the pen instead of just going straight onto that sort of tablet, yeah. is that like an aesthetic thing for you? Uh, yeah. I, I, I not sorry, aesthetic, um, kinesthetic. Yeah, I, I could do the whole comic on that tablet if I really had yeah. to. I've done that before if I was traveling or whatever. But it's just I like the feel of, of pen on paper. Uh, I don't enjoy drawing as much on the tablet as I do mm. on paper. And so that's basically, it's just personal preference. Every, every artist has their own preference sure. of how they work. Yeah. 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 I was, I, was I mean, it's probably, it's probably yeah. faster if I do it all digitally. Um, Cause you can, you can cut and paste and move things around easily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I still kind of prefer the, the old school way. Sure. Yeah. I was reading this book recently called the revenge of analog and right. <laughs> It's, it talks a lot about like how humans still love the touch and feel of things yeah. like more than like yeah. drawing on your iPad um, yeah. or the Wacom, but you know, like actually writing on a paper compared to writing on your iPad or typing. Yeah. Like it, humans just, yeah. there's something there that we, you know, we've had in us for centuries and, yeah. and <laughs> well, thousands and millions of years that we still require. So, yeah, I've, I've heard then that, that new iPad Pro with the i the i pencil is like really close to like pen hmm. and paper. I mean, pencil and paper. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're they're freaking expensive. So I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually I actually use the iPad Pro because uh, I I work as a coach and and I take like extensive notes and I actually yeah. write on that. I um, mean, there's an app there that then converts it straight to text, which is yeah, amazing. Wow. So it saves me. Yeah hours of like rewriting things do you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> it's just really and, it, and it's pretty natural how it works right on there yeah and I, I think it i think it learns your handwriting too because i like i find that i'm i'm i want i want to be uh, neat with my handwriting um yeah. but sometimes you just can't be um and even like the like i'm getting like you know sometimes when i'm writing like very quickly um, and it's not neat at all. It's starting to learn that too. So it's really, oh, really? Wow. fascinating. Eh? Yeah, I like to give that a try, that, that iPad, the iPad pencil. Yeah, yeah. And, cool. And, and, you know, you spoke about um, the science earlier and, and what have you, and you use science a lot in your work, and you've, you spoke a lot about a, f a lot of famous scientists, Albert Einstein quotes, mm -hmm. Richard Feynman, uh, Sagan, and, and a whole bunch more who we, obviously you also look up to and love a lot. Yeah. Um, what is the role? Like what is the science in your journey? And like, why have you found that do you love the science quotes or the quotes from scientists? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I just, yeah, I kind of just gravitate towards my own interests, I guess. I guess it's one of my interests is kind of being, you know, a, a amateur scientist, I guess, but <laughs> just kind of, yeah, they kind of uh, just, how the world works. Um, um, I'm into kind of history as well. So I've kind of done quite a lot of historical quotes, but yeah, there's no real particular reason besides me just enjoying these writers uh, and scientists. Um, and, you know, science communication is, is like a, so popular now on, on the internet. So that doesn't hurt, I guess. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just kind of trying to, to share my love for these amazing minds of history and, just their own creative process or their own kind of way they see the world, I find really um, inspiring. Yeah, it's lovely. It's awesome to bridge a gap, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, you get to have these crazy concepts sometimes in a in a real tangible way for people. And I think you know, you're a science communicator by doing that. Um, oh yeah, thanks. Cool. You know, no, it's really great. You know, that you can connect people to that in a different way. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, so some of my favorite the comics I've done, yeah, like, yeah, Richard Feynman, he, he's just, the way that he puts ideas across is just very unique and, mm -hmm. and entertaining. So um, I also do a lot of, you know, comedians, I guess. So I'm into comedy. Um, yeah. So it's, again, it's just whatever floats yeah. my boat, I guess. For sure. And, and talking about a slightly sort of uh, tougher side of things, you mentioned trolls earlier. And, you know, while we were doing the research for this um, podcast, we came across a, a site that was like being a bit negative about art and science and, and some of your work as well. And, you know, how do you deal with that? And like, how do you and, and like, does it affect you or do you just kind of just have to keep knuckling down or how, how does that sort of thing? Uh, how do you deal with that kind of thing? 
Oh, well, first thing, give me that name of that website. I'm going to go there right now. And them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, this stuff's out there. Kind of initially, when I first started to get a bit of negative um, feedback, that kind of was hard to take. Um, but, you know, over time, it's just like, it's just part of it, I guess. Whenever you put your, like I said, you know, whenever you put your work out there, you have to be prepared for, you know, not only the good, but also the bad. So mm. it's just part of, part of, you know, being, um, yeah, if you're going to, if you think your work is good enough to be seen by the whole world, then <laughs> you have to be able to prepare yourself for all the shit that's going to come as well. So, yeah, yeah. Again, initially it, it was hard to deal with at first, but now I just kind of, and again, this is like 95% of feedback I get is positive. So, yeah, of course. Um, you know, I just, you know, you just kind of, you kind of look at, those, look at those numbers and, you know, it's, kind of, it's obviously a minority that thinks like that. So, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Like, and I mean, it's not weird, I guess. Maybe this is just how humans are. You know, they just, they, they find yeah. some, I don't know. I don't know. They just, it, it, serves their ego or something by like trying to put other people down it's actually yeah. like you're like oh my word how pathetic can you be seriously yeah and sometimes on instagram you kind of know they're just kind of trolling they're kind of intentionally trying to stir the pot so you know you just kind of go whatever <laughs> exactly exactly and you know what's actually so, i found so funny is that <laughs> talking about trolls two of the biggest trolls that i've ever had in my life have actually been my mates and i'm like <laughs> oh, really? are you guys serious like you and i i, I had to block them seriously like uh, oh, two, really? two wow. of my mates aussie That's guys pretty, actually aussie guys pretty, yeah, pretty, I, I, had to, I literally had to block them recently i was like well sorry if you guys are not mature enough to be on social media then you've got to go <laughs> <laughs> are they still your mates <laughs> no they're my they, i mean if i see them in person they're in australia then i'll see them but i block them yeah. from business pages and online um, stuff yeah online stuff but uh yeah some people just can't can't deal with that i guess i guess you have to just accept that it's a given if you're online these days isn't yeah. it that there's yeah. a there is that percentage and uh but it is still ridiculous how people can find anything, like literally anything that's out yeah, there. Someone will find it. something negative, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, can you imagine being, you know, this mega famous celebrity who has to deal with, with all this negative trolling? It's just... Must be tough. Or like a, a woman who has to deal with all that, the crazy... Yeah, exactly. You know, ...they have to put up with. So, yeah, what I, what I have to put up with is nothing compared to that. Fair enough. Yeah. So, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about, like, what's going on for you now. I uh, know that uh, you busy producing a new book and yeah, uh, sure. yeah what, what can we sort of you know expect from you in the future too yeah so like zen pencils is like i said i was working on that full time all my heart and soul for over six years there's like over 200 comics that you can still read um i think you know it's got really some great stuff if you're into you know self-help or motivation or um, inspiration yeah so after doing that for so long, I just kind of I'm looking to do something different. Um, so at the moment I'm working on this new book series um, for here in Australia. Uh, hopefully it gets sold elsewhere around the world, but um, yeah, it's this new superhero kids um, comic series, um, which will be out in April, the first book. So I'm really excited about that. It's called Super Sidekicks. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's for like eight to 12 year olds. Um, if they're into, you know, the Avengers or superheroes or whatever, then they'll definitely like this new book, I hope. Um, so yeah, I've got, um, I've just finished book one and I'm working on book two now. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed that, um, that kids like that around Australia. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, Zen Pencils are still alive. It's not dead or anything. I'm just taking a break. Um, and yeah, if you're not familiar with, if people aren't familiar with it, I still recommend they go visit the, the site. There's heaps of content there that they can check out. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about this new series that I'm working on. Cool, man. Cool, man. Yeah, that sounds really awesome, but it must be it must be quite difficult to put a whole book together, like. Oh yeah. Big undertaking. <laughs> yeah, I've got a pretty um, tight deadline too, so it's it's been a lot of work. That's why I had to kind of put Zen pencils to the side. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's kind of. I think the next step in what I've wanted to do is kind of write my own stories um, and, you know, having to depend on other people's words, which was good to get started, but I'm ready to kind of come up with my own stories now, my own words. And um, yeah, it's a lot of hard work, but um, 
it's uh, it's fun yeah awesome, man. that's amazing and that's amazing progress like you know going from using other people's stuff to using your own that's just proper growth isn't it so well done <laughs> yeah and, thank you yeah and just in terms just before we finish off like where can uh, people find out about you and get hold of you obviously on your website uh, yeah on social media. Uh, so yeah on, on social media on twitter and instagram uh, the best places are at zen pencils um i just uh, finished my new a new pro, uh, portfolio website that's just um, my surname.com i'm fan um a-u-n-g-t-h-a-n.com that's where you can see this new project that i'm working on and zenpencils.com is the actual the main website that's still up and running where you can go visit the archives um there's like a, a new reader page if you're a new reader it's got all my best comics um that's a good place to start if you're new to zen pencils oh, awesome. brilliant. thanks man and gav we always sort of end off with a question uh with each guest and the question is what does being ridiculously human mean to you oh <laughs> um, you know, I think um, firstly, it's just being a good person is to treat others with respect and kindness. I think that is number one priority. Um, and number two, yeah, to be ridiculously human is to, yeah, is to have, have um, is like I said earlier, um, is to use your talents to try and help others, I guess, to try and make the world a better place and kind of to nourish your soul at the same time by by doing what you're good at, what makes you happy. And if you can, if you're able to help other people at the same time, then you are ridiculously human. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, bud. Cool, man. Thanks so much, bud. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. No. Thanks, Craig. Yeah, bad well, Pleasure thanks. Moment, yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Gary. Like it's been it's been so awesome chatting to you. And and I just want to encourage everybody that is listening to seriously go to your website go to your Instagram and, and check out the cartoons. Cause they are, I found them that you really made me giggle. Like, and, and you also really made me think and you, you know, you cross over on certain topics that are, you know, maybe a bit controversial, but also like very helpful. Like you said, um, self-help, personal development, that sort of stuff. And it's just, just got such a nice tone to it and with what you do, but, uh, yeah, thanks, man. but just wanted thanks, to say congratulations. I mean, it's very inspiring just hearing stories like yours, you know, someone that has totally just gone, you know what, I am going to live my passion and do what, do what I was made to do, you know, what is in my heart. And it's awesome, but it's, it's really inspiring. You know, you, you've made me think again, okay, I've got to go, I've got to go do what I really, really want, you know, on, on another level now. And um, uh, just love your work, but re really massive fan. And uh, yeah, just keep good luck with everything, seriously. And uh, you. I can't wait to see, um, you know, everything that you sort of uh, come up with and create in the future. Oh, thanks so much, Gareth. Appreciate yes. it. And uh, yeah, it was really fun. And thanks again for the invite. Pleasure. And just real briefly, Gav, you know, Gareth said it really well there. Uh, super inspirational, the stuff you're doing, but your work as well is you can't help looking at them and with this massive smile on your face. And then you end up left, left there and you think, hang on, like this is way deeper than that. And, and you, you can think about it for the next, the rest of the day. You might even think about that one thing you've read. And, um, and that's really powerful. I, I don't think it's, it, it, it might look simple when you, you know, the way you put it, you just, you know, the create, you, you sit down and you do it, but it's real art. And, and we, like Eric said, we're massive fans and, uh, we, we are very proud of you taking these massive steps. And I think it is inspirational for, to others just seeing what's possible out there. I mean, everyone's got their own journey, but the reality is you work hard, you, you put in the hours, um, and it's not always sexy. It's not always easy, like you said. And I yeah, think that's, right. that's, the, like, that's the magic is, you know, the stuff at the end of the day is great, but the journey getting there is, is what you really like put time and effort in. And, and that's really inspirational to both of us. And we totally high five you on that one and uh, can't wait to see your new book. So please let us know and we'll follow you on Insta. Obviously we see what's happening and we'll definitely be checking that out. So thanks again for your time today. Oh, thanks again, guys. Um, yeah, it was a great conversation and uh, yeah, best of luck with the podcast. And, thank you. Uh, cool. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man.
Sweet. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks. Um, I'll get that to you soon. And um, awesome, man. Yeah, it was a great chat. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, yeah. likewise. Thanks, my man. It was really great. And go and enjoy your afternoon now with your family. And <laughs> thanks, uh, man. We can't yeah. wait to see your book. It sounds really, really awesome, man. Great stuff. All right. Yeah. Gareth, is it bedtime? Is it over there? Oh, but I've just woken up. It was five a.m. But uh, oh, right. <laughs> the day is just starting. But all oh, right. Well, thanks for waking up at five a.m. <laughs> no pleasure, man. Thanks, Gareth. All right. It, thanks, man. guys. I'll see Thank you soon, man. See you Cheers, later, buddy. Man. Cheers, bud. Bye, bye, bye. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change.